Greetings and welcome to Life of Us, your blog, or vlog in this case, on board gaming, geek culture, Dungeons and Dragons, and basically anything geek related in general. Today I am very excited to be sharing with you some custom Dungeons and Dragons builds which I've done. As you know, I'm a big fan of the Dungeons and Dragons board games, for the first one being Castle Ravenloft, then Wrath of Ashardlin, The Legend of Drizzt, and now I've got Tomb of Annihilation, and pretty soon I'll be getting Dungeons of the Mad Mage, which I'm quite excited about. Um, and I've done, we've done a couple of custom campaigns, so please check out my blog, lifeofus.blogspot.com, and have a look at the Ruin of Nimba campaign, which is this big campaign we did, which incorporated the first three games. Um, and in that campaign we had a few custom characters that were built, the first one being a druid character, uh, which is still the character that I play with today in almost every single game, the second one being a necromancer character, which is also quite popular, uh, and then I did a mage build. So those three have gone through a bit of uh, iterations and clean up in terms of their mechanics lately, and I'll share that with you on my blog a little bit later. But I've got two exciting new characters which I've built uh, for the game series and which I was itching to build. I managed to get my hands on some miniatures uh, on a holiday abroad and I thought that this would be a good opportunity to create some new characters. So without further ado, let's have a look at those characters. Okay, first up we have... Ta -da -da. A character that I've been wanting to build for quite some time now, and that is a paladin. In particular, a dwarf paladin, as you can see. He's got a mighty hammer. So this miniature is actually from a dwarf cleric set from Nolz's Marvelous Minis, but it worked perfectly for the paladin build that I've been wanting to do for some time. These are the card backs. As you can see, it's all fresh from the printer. I haven't, they haven't been cut and they haven't been laminated yet. I'll get them done soon this week, but I just thought I'd show you what it looks like. Uh, we'll get into that in a minute. So let's have a look at the, let's just hop over here and have a look at the second character which I've built. And that is a human assassin. And for this one, I used a miniature which I think came from the Tyranny of Dragon set. This is actually a cult of, mm, human cult of the Dragon Enforcer mini or something along those lines. But managed to match up quite nicely with the artwork that I got hold of. And looks very assassinish. So, sort of the rogue archetype. And we'll look at his character stats in a minute. But let's start with the... Let's start with the uh, with the dwarf paladin and have a look and see what's under the hood and what makes this paladin tick. Okay, so Ulfric Stormhammer is a dwarf paladin from the icy northern kingdoms of Narn Steendark, and he wields his mighty storm hammer in his oath in his quest to fulfill his oath. Obviously, he's a paladin, and paladins need to have an oath. And of course, they could break their oath, but Ulfric's not that type of paladin. Obviously need to get him glued onto a base because he's kind of falling over the place. Very unbalanced hammer, isn't it? Um, but mighty indeed. So, let's have a look at his stats. He's a quite a resilient dwarf. He's got a very high HP of 10. Quite significantly strong armor of 17. Um, like most mountain dwarves, he's not that fast in terms of speed. His speed is only 5. Obviously, if he's lugging around a giant hammer all day, he's not going to be able to run or do any sprinting or marathons. Um, and his base abilities, let's have a look at his base ability. So his base ability is called Storm Hammer. And his entire class of utilities is actually centered around this mighty hammer, as we'll see in a minute when we get to it. And we also see how it plays out. He receives you receive two extra utility powers which is chosen from all freaks list of available paladin stances so we saw the stance mechanic in the legend of drizzt i think it was this is a stance token from from that uh, from that series and uh, we're going to find a very similar mechanic in play here for Ulfric. Um, yeah, and and we'll see that in a minute and for his powers we've got righteous smite because what's a paladin without a good smite uh, generally, it's called Divine Smite, but for Ulfric, it's tweaked slightly to call the right, be called Righteous Smite. There we see we get to select four utility powers instead of two, an at will and a daily. And then if you flip the card over to the second level, 
sorry, these have not been printed yet. I uh, have not been um, completed yet. They're straight out of the printer, and I'll get them done sometime this week or next week. But let's have a look. On the other side of, of the stats card, we see that in level 2, all the basics apply. You increase your hit points by 2, your AC by 1, surge value by 1, and you get to choose an additional daily class power. Um, his AC also goes up, as you can see. His speed is the same, so he's not going to get any faster. But uh, still, some worthy stats at second level. I have seen that with Dungeon of the Mad Mage, you can go up to the fourth level of some of these characters. So that will be cool to do for some of these custom builds and actually do a level three and four and see what, what comes out of it. But anyway, let's have a look and take a look at some of the power cards that Ulfric has. Okay, so his first at will... As we saw, Righteous Might. Wielding the mighty storm, your hammer, Ulfric gives a mighty blow at a nearby foe. And it's an adjacent attack to a monster, but it also has the special condition that if you hit the monster, the monster moves four squares in any direction. Uh, it's a plus seven attack, dealing one. And if we quickly have a look and see how this attack actually works, we've got Ulfric standing next to a very ugly looking ghoul over here. Oh, sorry, Mr. Gould, didn't mean to hurt your feelings. A very not, uh, well, he's not going to be making it to any fashion magazines anytime soon. But if Ulfric were to deal damage to him, if we were to roll an actual hit, uh, that's a good one. That's a 17, so that's a direct hit on that ghoul. Uh, the Righteous Smite, we really need to get Ulfric onto a base, so he's going to keep falling over. That Righteous Smite would deal one damage to the ghoul. Um, and, well, in this case, we could probably kill the ghoul, because the ghoul has got a single hit point, if I recall correctly, from Castle Ravenloft. But if this was a two-hit point creature, it would also send that creature flying four spaces in any direction. So you could go two, three, four, and the ghoul would land up in, this, in the middle of the dark fountain, <laughs> which I think is quite a cool effect for, for this mighty hammer type uh, adjacent attack. Let's have a look at some of the other atwells and how they play. Okay, the next attack, the next atwell attack is a ranged attack called Stone Strike. It's not a very powerful attack, it's, that it's only plus five, but it does deal damage to two monsters, which I think is going to be fairly useful um, in tight situations where you need to get rid of them. And on a roll of 18 plus, you deal one extra damage. It may only be used if your hero is adjacent to a dungeon wall. So uh, if you look at it in this case, we've got Ulfric standing. He is adjacent to this dungeon wall currently. There are two monsters, so you'll roll for the attack. And if he rolls high enough, smashes his hammer into the wall which sends a shockwave down here and the wall crumbling on that side probably taking out these two if you're lucky well that's a wraith so he's got an extra hit point but it will take out the zombie at least um yep so that's stone strike let's have a look at the next one okay the next attack is called the hurled hammer and this at will is one of my more favorite ones along with righteous smite is that it allows Ulfric to send his hammer flying forward. So it, the text is quite specific. It says, use, off, use after moving during your hero phase, attack one monster on a tile within one tile of you, then place the storm hammer token on the monster's square. While the storm hammer token is not on Ulfric's hero card, he may not make any hammer attacks. Retrieve storm hammer when Ulfric ends his hero phase adjacent to the token. Okay, cool. So there's a lot going on there. It's a plus nine attack with a damage of one. But let's have a look and see how the actual mechanic works. So on the board, it says it can only be done after Ulfric has made a move. Uh, so in other words, you cannot move after the attack, uh, probably because the hammer throwing is quite an exerting effect. Then Ulfric needs to take a break and have a snack probably to replenish his health or his strength after throwing this giant hammer at that orc on the distance over there. So how it works is um, he throws the hammer, so it's a range attack, the orc is within range, he's within one tile, um, and Ulfric has made his moves, uh, hurls the hammer towards the orc, and if it hits the orc, uh, it does one damage, and after it has hit the target, you place the hammer token on the square, uh, 
placed the Stolara token on the monster's square. So in other words, Ulfric has thrown his hammer, he now no longer has the hammer and he has to retrieve it, meaning he cannot make any more hammer attacks until he gets the hammer. So I've got some hammer tokens somewhere in here. There we go, that's the storm hammer token. I haven't printed it out yet, but for all intents and purposes we'll use uh, we'll use Bruno's power strike um, hammer just to demonstrate the effect. That token then lands up there. Um, obviously the the orc, if it's hit, is probably killed. But now Ulfric uh, ends his hero phase basically after making the attack because he cannot move again afterwards. And in his next hero phase, he gets he has to go and retrieve that hammer, so he needs to move one, two, three, and then end his hero phase um, in his square adjacent to the hammer in order to pick it up or on the hammer, I suppose, as well. And that's basically how that whole hammer strike works. Cool, let's have a look at his daily powers now. Okay, first up in the dailies, we have Hammer of Virtue. Um, and it allows for a double attack against two adjacent monsters. It does, it's a plus seven attack, does two damage, and on a miss does one damage. So it's practically a guaranteed hit. And after the attack, you may end one condition on any hero on your tile. That's a very powerful card. Uh, definitely something you want to add to your array for any tight situations you find yourself in. Let's have a look and see how it plays. So in this case, we have Ulfric uh, standing to, next to two pesky legion devils. They're both adjacent to him. Hammer Virtue will take them out even if he misses. The legion devils have got one hit point each, I think, if I had a call. So technically they'd be destroyed. Um, and then it also has the bonus of ending a condition on any hero on your tile. Um, and that I suppose includes Ulfric in this case. So if he was slowed or if he was immobilized, that would end. Or perhaps if the human assassin was in the distance and he was slowed, that would end the condition on him. So very useful attack. And let's have a look at the next daily. Okay, the next daily is called Song of Storms and it's essentially a buffed up version of the hurled hammer attack, at will attack. Uh, it does a lot more damage. It's a plus eight, but on a miss does one damage and can do up to three damage. And it targets all monsters on a tile within one tile of your hero. Again, it does have that condition that um, Ulfric needs to end his hero phase essentially after making the attack and that he cannot move afterwards. He can move any time before. Um, and also he ends up throwing the hammer so he doesn't have the hammer after making the attack. So let's have a look and see how the mechanic works. Over here we've got we've got a skeleton, a zombie, and a snake in the distance. Ulfric spots them. He throws, uh, rolls to throw the song, plays the plays the song of storms, and rolls a, a hefty dice. Sends his hammer hurtling towards all, all those creatures in the distance. They're all very low stat creatures, all one hit point creatures. So they're all destroyed instantly, and the hurled hammer is placed in the, sorry, the Song of Storms, in this case the Storm Hammer gets placed in the center of the tile. So that would be the center. And then obviously Ulfric has to go and retrieve the hammer in the next turn. So yes, a very useful attack. Okay, the final daily power is Compelled Duel. And this one comes directly from the Sauril Paladin. It's daily power from Tomb of Annihilation in that it basically forces a monster to heed the challenge that Ulfric, uh, well, that Ulfric issues. So he sees the wraith up in the distance. Uh, in this case, he sees the wraith up in the distance, compels him to challenge him, places him adjacent, and then makes the attack. Uh, I think it's really cool. I think the only difference uh, that's been added in this case is that this attack doesn't count as a hammer attack. So if he's lost his hammer, he can still play compelled deal, um, attack that monster, and it's going to dish out uh, quite a bit of damage. So it will probably kill the wraith in this case um, on that attack. And then, and then he's good to go. And then he can carry on trying to get back to his, his beloved storm hammer. Okay, so those are the dailies and the at will powers. The, the ones that we want to definitely look at are the utility powers because they buff up all the hammer attacks. So let's have a look at those. 
Okay, so just starting from the top left, not in any particular order. The first utility power, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight utility powers to choose from. Um, obviously, you get to choose two additional ones, so you start off with four utility powers, um, and that makes makes perfect sense for for the hammer type attacks that Ulfric will be making or the hand, hammer type uh, tactics that he will be employing. The first one is called Steadfast Stance. Use it to start of your hero phase, place your stance token on this card. While your stance token is on this card, all heroes on your tile gain a plus two bonus to AC. So it's definitely useful for buffing the entire party and not just Ulfric. That's the stance token over there. I haven't printed it yet, but I'll use the... I'll use the one from Drizzard, if I can just find it somewhere here. Oh, wait, here's the one. Here's Bruno's. So that goes on the card like that. Um, and while it's on the card, all heroes on your tile. So in this case, it'll just be the Human Assassin. My other heroes are sitting on my shelf over there. Um, and he'll have a plus two to his AC. Uh, very useful stance. So most of these utilities uh, are stance-based. So... You get to place the stance token at the start of your hero phase and you get to move it around at the start of your next hero phase so you can alternate between your four different utilities okay moving on let's have a look at the next one it's a holy stance the holy energy of storm hammer is able to slow down your approaching foes mm, that could be fairly useful if you place your stance token on this card that when the stance token is on this card, any monsters that are hit by a storm hammer attack are slowed. So it's got to be a hammer attack. It's got to be made with storm hammer. Um, and the monster is then slowed if that attack hits. Again, that's extremely useful given that um, given that the movement on, on the paladin dwarf is only five. So that any, any chance of a monster not getting to him or uh, not being able to get near him is extremely useful holy stance it is okay next one is divine stance okay so this one says Ulfric channels his storm hammer into a divine energy again use it to start the veto phase place your stance token on the card while your stance token is on this card you get a plus one bonus to all storm hammer attacks Ooh. Remove the stance after making the attack. So this buffs an attack. That's extremely useful. So, uh, for instance, if you were pairing this with with uh, a standard Righteous Smite, which is a Stormhammer attack against an adjacent monster, in this case the Wraith, as you see here, uh, it gives the Righteous Smite, which is a plus 7, now it's now a plus 8 attack, which is almost a guaranteed hit. The downside is that you have to remove the stance token after making the attack. So any card effect that allows you to do a double attack uh, won't, won't be in effect until your next phase. Okay, um, hasty stance, that's the next one. Every paladin knows when haste is needed, more so when storm hammer is apart from you. Okay, again, use it to start of your hero phase. Um, place the stance token on the card. And this one gives you a plus one bonus to speed. Ooh, that's useful. And if the Stormhammer token is not on your hero card, you gain a plus two bonus to speed instead. So that is a very, very useful card um, in that it would give you a plus seven movement to retrieve your hammer times when it's been thrown a bit too far. You can't get to it. So yes, I think that is a card that might definitely be a worthy part of your array, particularly if you're going to be doing lots of hammer throwing. Hammer time! Let's have a look at the next one. Healing Stance. Okay, so... Okay, this one, Healing Stance, does... While your Stance token is on the card, roll a 1d20 after making a Storm Hammer attack. For any roll greater than 15, you or an adjacent hero regains 1 HP. Hmm. Okay, so healing is not free. You've still got to try to roll as high as you can, of course. You could probably, uh, well, you won't be able to buff your rolls with any of the existing utilities, but it does allow you to keep this one in your, uh, in your array of utilities and just leave it there so that you could use it after making any storm hammer attack you get to roll. So it's an additional roll after an attack. So if you 
roll to attack the Wraith over there, you would then roll, if you had your stance on this card, you would then roll again, and if you needed some healing, and you rolled high enough, you would get the healing. So I think it's quite a useful card. Stone Stance. Um, while your stance token is on this card, you gain a plus one to AC. So uh, his AC stats are very great already. I think he's at 17 AC, so this would give you an 18 AC which makes him almost near invulnerable against most attacks. All right, then we've got Prophetic Stance, and this one allows you to scry through the exploration and, sorry, scry through the monster and encounter decks during your exploration phase. That is useful. So you get to look at the top card of either the monster encounter decks to see what's coming, provided the stance token is on this card. The last one is Inspiring Stance, and this one, I think, is also going to benefit the party. In this case, all heroes on your tile gain a plus one bonus to attack rolls. So if you had a, a party member with a fairly low attack stat, this would now give him a plus one bonus to attack rolls, provided he was on your, on your tile. Hmm. Okay, so those are, that's the utilities in a nutshell. As you can see, they definitely, boost, they definitely boost Ulfric's uh, attacks, as well as his tactics. He's a dwarf with a giant hammer, um, and how you use it is entirely up to you, whether you prefer attacking adjacently and smashing into things, or whether you prefer throwing it from a distance and hoping that it uh, takes out enemies in a distance. Either way, you'll be using these utilities um, to bolster and improvise on some of Ulfric's tactics or on whoever's in his party at that time. So um, I'll put these up on my blog. Um, please have a look at them. Um, if you are playing the D&D board games, see how the character spins. If you find anything that's blindly wrong in terms of mechanics, please sign off on the comments below or let me know uh, via email. Um, but yeah, that's the Paladin Dwarf, and rather excited to see this character come into a campaign and see how he plays. And that's all from the Paladin Dwarf side. We'll move on to look at the Human Assassin uh, in the next video. Until then, keep well. Ciao.